How's it going? How's it going? Here we are. Live and in person. Hey guys, welcome to the show. Our top story today is four myths that just aren't true when it comes to selling your home today. <laughs> to do anything just put it on the market and it's gonna sell well unfortunately that's really not true uh, their homes really need to be the ones that sell the fastest and the quickest and for top dollars should be fixed up and ready to go especially the higher the price point buyers want it move in ready so the easiest way to make it look move in ready is of course clean 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 um, paint flooring and make sure everything in the home is working because you know there is a home inspection coming. So people get excited in the frenzy, making an offer. It's exciting, new property on the market. But then the reality sets in after the home inspection and the excitement has worn off and you see the money and the time it's gonna take to fix the things that need to be fixed and may not stay in uh, escrow. That is when things fall out. So always a good idea to have it looking its best and ready to sell. That's right. Myth number two, you can price the home as high as you want and you will get it. That's just not going to happen. Is, you think that's going to happen? No. <laughs> that is not going to happen. We've all heard of the crazy stories where, you know, a house was listed for a million dollars and went out for a million four. Forty percent over what they had listed the price for. That is not really happening every single day. Now that does happen. But that's more and more rare, especially these days. It's always an economic conversation. You sit down, you say, hey, this is what the neighborhood's like. This is what we're paying. Yes. And believe me, buyers are willing to pay a little more than the last one. And a little more is their call, not the seller's call. Wouldn't it be nice if the seller could say, hey, yes, I want 40% over every time they list the price. You wouldn't have an argument with the seller on that conversation ever. Uh, appraisals have been challenging as you know home prices move up quickly. It seems to us that there's more and more cash coming in the market. So it, they're really not based upon appraisal price. Even though they are, they're not. And even though they're not, they are. How ironic is that? People really don't feel comfortable paying way over appraisal price. If it's a few thousand, that's okay. If it's a hundred thousand, that's a different category. Even though a lot of offers these days, they do waive the appraisal, but the buyers inevitably end up getting an appraisal and we always recommend they do so. Mm -hmm. We do. Uh, overpricing a home to leave room for negotiating is not a strategy. A better strategy, in our opinion, is to price it at market maybe slightly over market and instead of leaving room for negotiating hopefully the buyers come in you get a bidding war going and then you bring up over asking price however if it does come in at asking price make sure that you as the seller are totally comfortable taking that price and usually that's the case right well, we've seen in this market sellers want to you know drastically overprice their home and it's just never a good strategy because the seller can determine the price but the buyer always determines the value. That's true. Uh, we don't need to market the home. We don't need to do anything. It's going to sell. Well, that is 100% a myth. You absolutely do need to market the home. And number one thing, you must have professional photography. Of course, we use professional phot photography on all of our listings because it is so important. All buyers are looking online. And if you only have one chance to make a first impression, so your photography had better be spot on and excellent. The full description of the property, all the features of that property need to be spelled out. So a buyer, when they're flipping through, can really make a determination because they're going to make it quickly. You know, no second chance to make a first impression. So it's really important that they're there. And we're having a lot of buyers in our market come from out of the area. So they can't just jump in their car and go drive by it and see if it's something that they really are interested in. So the online mar uh, marketing of, uh, with photography, good photography, good descriptions, and of course, our um, internet presence at Berkshire Hathaway is worldwide, goes everywhere, and then some. 
That's right. Is that, uh, is that myth number three? That's myth number three <laughs> is that you do have to market the property. The myth is that you don't ha uh, have to. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Myth number four. The seller's got an easy job. All they have to do is pick the highest offer. Isn't that right? Huh. Yeah, huh. that's a myth. Uh -huh. Because the highest offer is not always the one the seller chooses. There's a lot of other moving parts in the deal. Let's say the highest offer, and let's say it's considerably higher than the second place offer, but it's contingent on them selling a the home. That's, you know, 95% financing, you know, versus an all cash offer, or let's say a 50% down offer that's less than the highest price offer. You always want to pick the right offer that works for you. And a lot of times, not all the time, but a lot of times it's not the highest price to offer. That's right. That's right. Terms might be more important. So they might need terms. They might need to get a rent back. Uh, might be more important to them. The timing of the escrow, whether it needs to close fast or close longer. Uh, those are some things that might matter to the seller even more than price. It is. It's mm -hmm. always what works best for the seller and the buyer. And remember, it's a bilateral contract. That means the buyer has to agree and the seller has to agree on the terms of the contract. One of the challenging things of having multiple offers in this market has been really choosing the right offer, so to speak. I mean, you have all these offers up front, everyone's excited, but which one is really going to close? I mean, accepting an offer is really, you really want the one you choose to be the one that's actually going to ride the whole wave and close the escrow. So it is somewhat of an art and a science to try and hold the one together that's going to be the one that actually closes escrow. <laughs> oh yeah, you know, these days, based on our experience, even when the seller accepts the buyer's offer, the buyer sometimes changes their minds, it seems like, very quickly. And of course they have that right to do that and we would rather them change their mind in a few hours versus a few days. And then you come back on the market or you start making the calls to the people, the buyers that made the offers and it's, oh, they've moved on. Oh, this has happened. Oh, that's happened. Things change very quickly mm -hmm. in this marketplace. That's right. Uh, one of the things is that home prices have gone up about 23%. So it's been quite uh, much more than normal. I mean, they say the average appreciation is about 5% a year, but we're at 23% right now. And we don't see that slowing down, at least based on our market here. We do see inventory growing a little bit. Another statistic I thought was interesting was rent appreciation is up 13% year over year. Rents have gone up, um, and these are national numbers. And what was interesting to me to that was that is single family homes, whereas apartment rents have only gone up about 8%. I mean, only, but less than single family homes. And I think part of that is just the demand. I think there were renters in place in apartments that figured out through the last year and a half, they needed a yard or they needed more room and they ended up uh, wanting single family and it drove the demand up in the single family rental market. But they might have needed more quiet space mm -hmm. where if they had a noisy neighbor or a noisy neighborhood that they wanted to get away where they could actually work from home in some silence and still sound professional or not like they were at the uh, state fair. <laughs> Yeah, nine, and another thing was 90%, nine, nine out of 10 or 90% of uh, buyers were home buyers owner occupied. They were gonna live in the property. And that number now has dropped to 84%. So that number is going down, the investor number is going up. So that's also adding to the fuel. If you're trying to buy a home as an owner occupied, you have the investors competing with you at an even uh, higher rate. Investors are very savvy buyers. They are. They're usually offering cash or their financing is nailed down where it's unquestionable. Instead of a pre-approval letter from a lender, you get a commitment, hey, this is what we're going to do. A lot of times it's through private banking. Mm -hmm. So we're starting to see some price reductions. That's obviously where the seller has started off too high or anticipated the market moving into their price, and it didn't. Not that the market's moving down, it's just very stable and moving up, not as quite as fast as it has been in the past. Let's just say we were driving along at 100 miles an hour, 
and now we're driving 65, 70, just a little over the speed limit. Well, if you've ever driven that fast and then slowed down to the speed limit, it just feels like you can get out of the car and start walking. That's not the case. This is a case where the market is still very, very extremely strong, but it's not as strong as it was. And that's proof in the numbers. Well, the multiple offers in April, we were looking at almost 75% of the properties getting multiple offers. We're looking at June, it was down to about 65% of the properties getting multiple offers. And if you drop down to July, I know it's September, but if we go back to July, we're down to 60%. And down to 60% getting multiple offers, my gosh, not long ago, that would have been unheard of. That's how strong the market is. August numbers aren't out yet. However, they are coming. We anticipate those probably based on these numbers around 55%. So every other house is getting multiple offers. A lot of houses are just getting one offer. Now the offers that are coming in on those homes are good offers. So I don't want you to think that, you know, they're low ball offers no. or offers that, <laughs> that no. aren't gonna go forward and close. They're really good offers. In fact, they're great offers. So you don't need multiple offers. You only need one. And I have, certainly haven't seen, I don't think I've even seen a low ball in this market at all. Usually you get a low, a real high, and then they all cluster at, at some price that the market really feels the value is. But we haven't seen that lately. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, we haven't. So that's the numbers for today. These are the four myths that just aren't true about selling a home today. Visit us at GaryandLisa.com. <laughs> your real estate is. For all your real estate information. <laughs> Thanks, guys.